Hey everybody, this is actually my 100th video on the channel, so I wanted to make it a little more personal, um, a little more meaningful to me, and um, bear with me, really sensitive topic, but uh, I basically can't ignore the Stop Asian Hate Movement. You might have seen the hashtag being Asian trending, and I want to talk about being Asian, because this movement did not just start now. I felt like I was screaming a few years ago about racism. Here's my story, and uh, I do kind of want to end it on more of a positive note, sort of, um, but, and I do think it helps to share, so just bear with me. I'm reading off the notes because um, it, it's a little easier for me to talk about it, uh, having written it down, so uh, that's, that's if, I'm, if you notice me looking down, I'm just looking at my notes. Um, but so I grew up in Central PA. And like many other places, racism shines. Uh, Pennsylvania is also called Pensatucky. When I was going to kindergarten, my family told me that people would always make fun of me for the way I looked, for being Asian. So it's my job to not give them any other reasons to make fun of me. You know, kind of being the better citizen, being the better person. Um, and a lot of my childhood was on the concept of this is how it is. Um, and I think growing up and going to university, I started to realize that just because this is how it is, doesn't mean that it's right. It doesn't mean that it can't get better. And that's part of the reason why I'm sharing. You know, issues, so yeah, started as a kid, but um, continued, you know, as I got older. Um, I was having trouble getting help at a job. And I was directly told that people may be more helpful if I told them that I wasn't actually Asian. Uh, this is devastating for me because I am Asian <laughs> and um, yeah, you know, maybe I'm not like the stereotypical foreigner because I grew up in Pennsylvania, um, but uh, the fact that people weren't or were potentially probably not helping me, you know, I really like to succeed in things that I try to do uh, and I can't succeed without help and so without that help because of the way I looked. I wasn't being successful uh, and that was just devastating because I feel American, I feel like not a foreigner um, and it drove me crazy. <laughs> that was a really, really rough time in my life. But it continues, right? So especially around election time, um, a few months ago my friends and I were followed outside of a restaurant and told to go back home to our country. Uh, well my home is Pennsylvania. And uh, at first, so for context, uh, sorry I should have said earlier, uh, I'm adopted from China, I've lived in Pennsylvania my whole life except for the first four months where I was in China as a baby. I don't speak Mandarin, um, only speak English. And I was raised in a very Caucasian uh, family. Uh, but so back to the, the restaurant story, sorry. Um, at first I thought it was my fault for being too loud while I was eating. You know, I was with my friends, I was laughing, uh, my laughter was loud. And that agitated, you know, these people that are now yelling at me to, to go home. Um, but then when I, you know, later left and was talking about it to some people, uh, they reminded me that it's not my fault, that I was trying to live my life, to live my life and enjoy my meal with my friends. And just for being loud shouldn't be justification to be told that I need to leave this country which in my opinion is my country in the first place but it's just very frustrating it's not deserved it's not needed it's not right um, and then it still continues right a few months ago I'm trying to fill up my car tires with air I accidentally cut the line I didn't realize that there was a line and someone just starts yelling at me about how I have rights and I can do things because I have rights and once I realized that I cut him in line, I said, like, you deserve to go in front of me. I'm sorry. Um, but he was just so agitated. Like, I honestly did not feel safe if I walked into the gas station so I could be around other people until he left uh, to feel safer. And it's draining. It's draining to be reminded that because of my race, I will be viewed as an outsider, as someone who has to work harder, as someone who is less desirable, as someone who has to be more cautious about upsetting people because their reactions can be fueled with so much racist aggression. A couple things. 
Uh, I know there's a lot of rhetoric of, you know, well, it could be worse, you know, um, I, yeah, I could have not been adopted, right? I could have stayed as an orphan in China, so I should be thankful, you know, despite the racism. Um, and I am, I'm so proud to, to be an American. Um, but I still don't believe that this rudeness and these racist, like this racism is okay. And I acknowledge that racism is not just an issue in the United States. I travel a lot. I've been followed, being yelled at, you know, cockroaches, eerie cockroaches. Um, different, on a different trip, I was followed and giving you the squinty eyes and trying to speak fake Chinese to me um, by children, you know? It's disheartening because this is my vacation. This is supposed to be my empowerment journey. But I can't run away from the way I look. I can't run away from being Asian. And that's a really hard concept to accept and to think through and to work through growing up in a place where the, you're the only one that looks a certain way and you're looked down upon for it. You're, you're, well, I'm literally not doing as good in my job because of it. Um, and I struggle with what to do other than just awareness. Uh, honestly, seeing more successful people that look like me, you know, someone like me, in the media, who are powerful and beautiful, uh, inspires me. Blaine Empire, uh, despite being a reality TV show, has been a huge form of solidarity. Uh, even reading the comments about how people are just saying, you know, like, how beautiful it is. And, and they have an Asian um, uh, who was adopted and grew up in Pennsylvania, also just like me, and it's a lot that I could relate to. My name is Kevin Kreider. I'm a Korean American adoptee, and growing up, I wanted to be white. My first memory of remembering that I wasn't white was being in kindergarten. And there's this Italian kid going around going, ching chang chong cha cha cha, you're Chinese, you're Chinese, laughing, going around single handedly pointing me out. Then fast forward to Asking girls out on dates. This part's fun. Sixth grade, I ask a girl out to a dance, and she says, hmm, I'm not into Asian guys. <sighs> okay, let me walk that one off. People will tell me it's like, well, at least you don't have the black stereotypes. I'm like, that's supposed to make me feel better? It's called marginalizing. Just because it's not as bad as this, you have no reason to talk. If there's anything, anything I got from this and anything I want you to take from this is that I actually didn't want to be white. I just wanted to be treated like I was white. It's comforting and empowering just to see successful people in the media uh, to kind of normalize the, the way that we look. And I hope, you know, more media comes. But in this video, I just want to remind all Chinese Americans that we are beautiful and we are not alone. Um, as my friends have said, it shouldn't always fall upon the victims to stand up for themselves because it's absolutely draining. I've probably said the word draining, you know, like a million times already just in this video. Um, but I am hopeful that I won't feel the need to tell my kids that people will make fun of them because they're Asian when they go to school. and. Um, to all the people who you know maybe haven't experienced these things, I really encourage you to be a great ally, to stand up for people when they see you know microaggressions or you know even some of the more obvious examples I listed. Um, it means a lot to have someone to step in for you because um, I know you're supposed to stand you know to stand up for yourself or to laugh it off or to accept it, um, but that's so draining and I don't believe that's really what's going to help us get better. Um, so for people who have gone through these things, I just want to say that um, I feel your pain and um, you're not alone and I hope that this movement continues and we see actions just from allies, from regulations and um, again this is a really sensitive topic to me. I'm really passionate about it and um, it's hard for me to always use the right words or to find constructive things to do. Um, but thanks for listening. <laughs>
hopefully we can continue the conversation. Um, but thanks and check back next week for another video.